Hello everyone, welcome to Shofuso. Today I'm going to be taking you on a brief tour of the house and garden and teach you a little bit about what Shofuso is and why it's here, and also a little bit about Japanese history and cultures. So why don't you come with me? Shofuso was designed by architect Junzo Yoshimura and built in Nagoya, Japan in 1953 before being disassembled and transported by boat to the Museum of Modern Art in New York City. After a year and a half on display there, it was taken apart once again before finally being moved to its permanent home here in Philadelphia in 1958. The first thing that you'll notice after you pass our hedge is this beautiful wide entrance that we have here to the house. Now, this is your first clue that Shofuso is a very special place for very important people. Now, every Japanese house is going to have this area over here called a genkan, which is just a place for removing your shoes. But Shofuso also has this, which is called a shikidai. And let me explain to you why that's important. Very high-ranking samurai, or very wealthy Buddhist monks, or even members of the imperial family or the imperial caste would live inside a house like this. And so this shikidai is sort of your first clue to that, because it's a way for the very important person staying in this house to receive visitors. And because I'm sitting a few steps above where a messenger or a visitor might be, it's a way to show that I'm of a higher class than uh, the person that's visiting the house. Built in showing zukuri, or desk-centered style, Shofuso is mostly made from hinoki lumber, a type of Japanese cypress reserved only for the most prestigious structures. So Shofuso is a 17th century style structure and it's the only house of its kind that exists outside of Japan. So we're extremely lucky to have this here in Philadelphia. And you can see on the inside how extravagant its architecture really is. Again, just a reminder of the type of person that would have been in a house like this. So you can imagine yourself in the 1600s in Japan being a wealthy samurai or member of the imperial family and perhaps coming here to stay for a while. The first of Shofuso's three gardens is our beautiful and large hill and pond garden, which is really just a viewing garden meant to be viewed specifically from our main veranda here. So the idea is that you are this very wealthy and powerful person staying in this house and you'd want something very beautiful to look at while you're inside of it. So this garden, again, it's like a living painting that is hung in front of the house as an extension of its interior. So from our main veranda, we can actually go inside of one of the rooms of the house. These doors, or amado, on the outside are actually all removable. So on a very nice day, you could actually have your servants take off all of these doors and really just open up the house to the outside world. But for now, let's come inside. So this is our 15 tatami mat room, and it's named, obviously, because it can fit 15 tatami mats inside of it. Tatami mats are roughly three feet by six feet and are made of packed rice straw with woven rice straw on top and bottom. The edges are lined with silk. And also, since it's Children's Day, today we have a very special display of armor. And this is something that's traditionally done for Boys' Day. So long story short, there was Boys' Day and Girls' Day, and they sort of combined both of them. So now there's just Children's Day to celebrate all children in Japan. The armor sits on a tokonoma, which is a space for displaying art or scrolls. You'll also notice the incredible mural behind it, which is repeated on the sliding doors or fazuma in the other rooms of the house. These were painted and donated to the house by famous Japanese artist Hiroshi Senju in 2007. But the most important thing in this room, and possibly this entire house, is this right here. And this is actually a piece of furniture. This is a showing or a desk. And the idea is that a desk was a way to show your wealth and your power in Japan in the 17th century. Because if you needed a desk, that meant that you could read and you can write. And if you can do those things, it meant that you were sort of a part of this sort of wealthy realm of society. So you can imagine sitting here, writing poetry or reading scrolls, and you can open these beautiful shoji screens for a view of the tea garden beyond, which let's go take a look at that. The second of Shofuso's gardens is our roji or tea garden, 
which acts as an extension of and also an entrance to Shofuso's tea house, which we'll be visiting in just a moment. If you were a guest at a tea ceremony, you would first wait at the stone bench in the distance before walking over the stream, crossing through the gate from the outer to inner tea garden, and then you would stop at this stone basin to wash your hands and rinse out your mouth before proceeding to crawl inside the tea house through this entrance here. So once inside the tea house, the first thing that you do as a guest is approach this area, which is a tokonoma, like that large area that had the armor in the 15 tatami mat room, but on sort of a smaller scale. And there would be a scroll hanging up that the hosts would hang, something that they would want the guests to think about, um, maybe something to do with the time of year it is, or um, the time of day it is, or their relationship with the guest. And then the guests would proceed to line up along this dark colored paper, and then the host would enter from the second room, and the tea ceremony would begin. And the goal of tea ceremony is for the hosts and the guests to both become present in a single moment in time. That's when they are sitting there drinking tea, they don't think about the past, they don't think about the future, all there is is right here and right now, and they can share that special moment together. Outside of Shofuso's tea house is our third and smallest garden, which is our Suboniwa, or courtyard garden. Usually confined within the walls of a structure, Suboniwa usually feature one or two intentionally placed objects, such as a water basin or lantern, as well as the three main elements of a Japanese garden, greenery, stone, and water. So next to our tea house and also connected to our Suboniwa is Shofuso's very own bathhouse. So let's take a look. So the bathhouse is actually split into four separate rooms. Um, the idea being that on the far end in its own room is the toilet and then on the other side is the place where you're actually going to get clean. So the idea is that you would sit here and actually use a little bucket to get your body entirely clean before going into the tub, which is really just a soaking tub full of hot water. So sort of the final step after you get clean is just soaking in nice hot water. And if it's a warm or nice, beautiful day like it is today, you can even open up these slots in the wall to invite a nice, cool breeze into the bath. From the entrance of the bathhouse, you get a great view of Shofuso's roof. Made of millions of strips of bark from the Hinoki tree, it's the only roof of its kind to exist at this scale outside of Japan, and is definitely one of Shofuso's most impressive and iconic features. And the last stop on our tour is Shofuso's kitchen, which actually isn't a kitchen at all, but rather an example of a completely different style of Japanese house. The kitchen is in Minka style, which basically means people style. And the idea is that this is an example of a one room farmhouse that you might find in the Japanese countryside in the 17th century and beyond. It mainly features a wood burning stove for cooking soup, vegetables, and rice, an area for storing fresh drinking water, as well as a removable sink for cleaning food and dishes, and finally a charcoal grill for slowly cooking fish and other food. I hope you've enjoyed this brief little mini tour of Shofuso, and I really hope that you join us when we reopen again, because we've really just scratched the surface. There's so much to learn about Japanese history and culture and Shofuso itself, so please be sure to come out again once we reopen our doors.